All right, so today I'm going to be teaching you about the process of meiosis. So meiosis is basically a form of cell division that creates four gametes, which are sex cells like sperm and egg cells. Now, these sex cells each have half as many chromosomes as a somatic body cell, all right? So, for example, the way to, to describe this is somatic cells are diploid cells, meaning that there are double as many chromosomes as a haploid cell, all right? And a haploid cell is only sex cells. Sex cells are haploid cells. Somatic cells and all other cells are diploid, all right? So unlike meiosis, cells go through the process of prophase, metaphase, anaphase, and telophase, PMAT, twice. There's a meiosis one and a meiosis two, all right? So you go from... So on this diagram, obviously you have interphase on top that comes before the cell division and meiosis one essentially starts with a somatic cell or a diploid cell, I should say. So a diploid cell, you're going to go through the process of prophase, metaphase, anaphase, and telophase, pretty similar to that of meios or mitosis. Um, you're going to have chromosomes line up along the center, sister chromatids will separate, and essentially you're going to get two chromosomes or you're going to get um, chromosomes in each of the cells. Now in meiosis two, once you have the new cells from meiosis one, you're essentially going to break apart these um, through prophase, metaphase, anaphase, and telophase. You're going to break apart the chromosomes and you're going to get identical sister chromatids in each daughter cell. Now these identical sister chromatids are your sex cells. And now something that can happen during this is a form of genetic variation that can contribute to gen genetic variation. You can have something called independent assortment, which is basically the, f it's basically the, f the fact that chromosomes line up along the center of the cell in metaphase in a random order. All right. You can also have crossing over. So if you can see on some of these chromosomes, there's like red, but there's also a little shade of blue. They're blue, but a little shade of red. These chromosomes crossed over at certain points and basically swapped genetic information, okay? Leading to genetic variation. So these sex cells are exact copies of what, um, what we started with because you would just make a complete exact copy or a clone of the... Um, parents. So that's what you're trying to avoid. You're trying to get genetic variation. Now your daughter cells are going to be haploid um, with sex cells in them. So meiosis one, if we break this down a little more, you start with a diploid cell that goes through all stages of prophase, metaphase, anaphase, and telophase, and cytokinesis obviously, and creates two separate cells with half the amount of chromosomes in it, all right? So you're going to create these two separate cells that start with half the amount of chromosomes. <coughs> so you can see here in this starting cell, we started with four chromosomes, right? Two sets of chromosomes, four total, okay? That's diploid. Now, at the end, you're going to have only two chromosomes in each cell. That's part of, that's the process, or the results of meiosis one. Now going to my meiosis two, you're going to get this same product right here. You're going to take the product of meiosis one and essentially you're going to split apart the chromosomes and create these sex cells that have um, gametes in them, which are basically the sister chromatids of the chromosomes that you had. Okay. Now that's what you're going to get as a result of meiosis two. So this is the first cell for meiosis one. This is the second cell for meiosis one. They're both going to go through the phase of PMAT, right? And you're going to end up with two here. You're going to end up with sex cell here, sex cell here, sex cell here, sex cell here. And that is the result of meiosis two.